police make cuts to their budget. One unintended consequence could be that campaigners have to pay to protest. Activists have lashed out at proposals from the Metropolitan Force that they should cough up the expense for traffic management during their demonstrations. That includes road closures, barriers and stewards. Twelve campaigning groups have issued a joint statement branding it an unacceptable restriction on the right to protest. Sam Fairburn joins me now. He's the National Secretary of the People's Assembly Against Austerity. Sam, an unacceptable restriction on the right to protest. Uh, that's a bit strong, isn't it? All they're asking is for demonstrators to pay for the inconvenience and, of course, the ensuing traffic management that's needed during a demonstration. Well, firstly, this is a massive shift. It's a massive shift in terms of the way that demonstrations have been organised for decades and decades. Now. For, to ask demonstrators to uh, come up with these kind of traffic management plans essentially means that we have to hire private security firms, we have to hire companies that know how, what they're doing with this. We don't know what the bus routes are, we don't know about how to divert traffic and all those kinds of things. So it means we have to hire uh, companies to do that at the cost of tens of thousands of pounds. So essentially what this is saying is that you can't have, you can't, you're unable to hold a protest unless you've got rich backers, unless you can afford to pay tens of thousands of pounds. Would it actually encourage you to find other places to demonstrate? After all, many people who don't want to be part of a protest are disrupted because of traffic problems. Well, the problem with the, the problem with that is that the point of protesting is to make a stand to in some of the most symbolic places in London. We, uh, we've often protested outside Parliament, outside Downing Street, outside all of these different places. And it's a fundamental right in Britain today, in any democratic uh, country, that, you, that people have the right to assemble. And that's essentially what we're saying. And, and do you think the taxpayer is happy to pay for the extra burden, which, well, here in London, for example... Well, I don't think this is about... I don't think this is about money, by the way. I really don't. I don't think there's any coincidence that these changes have come about just a few months before a general election. We're faced with one of the most unpopular governments. There's, uh, we've faced five years of austerity. There's all sorts of uh, people are very, very angry about what this government's doing. And I think basically what the, this decision represents is that the government and the police are trying to stop people protesting. Do you think you could find a compromise with the Metro? and police over this or will you just simply reject this initiative altogether? absolutely not we it's been a fundamental right this is how protests have been organized for decades it's them and we go to the police and we say to them you need to facilitate these protests you need to close the roads down so that you, we can uh, we can hold our protests safely uh, and we are say and we're not willing to change that we're not willing to pay any money towards protesting because it means that organizations won't be able to protest if this is the case we, well, uh, we, but maybe we, just a, a rich man's preoccupation well, absolutely. I mean, unless you have rich backers, you won't be able to protest. It's not right. It's absolutely not right. And we've, us alongside pretty much all of the organisations that uh, organise big demonstrations in Britain, have signed a declaration to say that we will not comply and we will go ahead with protest anyway. Sam Fairburn, thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Well, that's all.